Can you make a lot of money selling your art online? Yes, you can. And in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to get started. Hi, I'm Thomas, and I've been an online seller in the digital art space for a while now, and I've gotten pretty damn good at it. And today, I wanna to share some of my knowledge with you. If you've been creating digital art for a while, you definitely had that moment where you thought about selling your own work. Maybe you even gave it a try, made a few accounts on the well-known marketplaces, half-assed some product description, and then waited, and waited, and waited. And then you had to forget all about it because your entry-level job was demanding your full attention. Sound familiar? I've been through the exact same thing. I'm here to tell you that you are not alone. Failure to make money out of your art is somewhat a rite of passage here. We've all done it, and we've all succumbed to the myth saying that art will leave you enlightened, yet homeless. But it doesn't have to be that way, at least I don't believe so. It's not 1969 anymore. You can be a free-spirited hippie and still get a sizable monthly income. Despite what purists say, inspiration will hit you even if you have food in your stomach. We now have the internet. I'm really trying to help people break that starving artist stereotype. But fortunately, when it comes to selling your art, there is some really good news. There are plenty of people out there who value art in all of its forms and who will gladly spend some cash to get something that speaks to them on an emotional and personal level. You just need to find them. Hello there. And in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. So I'm gonna get into all the advice in a second, but the first thing I wanna talk about is the most obvious question, and why should you sell your art online? Now, it may seem like many people out there have a bone to pick with artists selling their work online. Many people out there will also have a bone to pick with artists promoting their work on social media. Art is not content, we hear them say. But let me tell you something that I've gained from experience. Artists have been snobs since art became a thing. There is no way around that. People like this are always going to exist. But art is a mirror for the human experience. It's supposed to change and evolve along with us. So there is no reason for you to not take advantage of the modern tools we have when promoting your own digital art. Selling your art online comes with a myriad of advantages apart from, you know, money. It allows you to find fresh audiences for some of your old work, which would otherwise be rotting in a folder somewhere on your hard drive. Not only this, but you'll also cultivate your entrepreneurial skills. Having some business knowledge is never a bad idea, especially when you're learning this new skill to promote something you truly believe in. And in the art world, having even a sliver of marketing knowledge puts you at a massive advantage over the vast majority of people that are working in this space. There really is no reason for you to not give it a try. You might be surprised at the outcome. So let's get you off the ground and help you nail that first sale. So before we get started, there is a bunch of work that needs to happen behind the scenes. Just like how you'd never start a hockey game without having a game plan, the same thing goes for setting up your art business. But that can be pretty confusing. Where do you even start? Fortunately, I've created a small list in this video to help you orient yourself and understand what steps you need to take to help ensure a successful launch of your art business. The first step is to make a vision board and start setting some goals. Before you get into this, you really need a clear picture of exactly what you're looking to accomplish. Just selling art is a really vague intention. And if you try to sell your work without a plan, you're basically just shooting your in the dark. You need to understand just how much time you're willing to spend every day maintaining your business. How much are you looking to earn a month? What type of products will you sell? Where will you sell them? What type of customer experience are you going to offer, etc., etc. Take some time to visualize your ideal business while still keeping your feet firmly planted on the ground. Be realistic about the time you'll spend on this, your marketing budget, and how much time you're willing to wait before you see some profit. Getting all of this in writing is one of the best things you can do to ensure later success, so take your time with it. Dream as big or as small as you want, but make sure you know exactly what you're going for. Step number two is to balance business with art. Once you figure your goals out, it's time for some education. Now, you wouldn't start fixing your washing machine without knowing exactly how it works. So generally, it's a bad idea to go into business without learning the basics first. There is plenty of good quality free business courses online. A lifetime wouldn't be nearly enough for you to read every book that's been written on the subject. Seriously, there's so much information out there. I actually have an entire series on this on my YouTube channel where I'm trying to teach artists how to become financially independent. And this is the latest video in that series. At the beginning, it's important that you devour every last piece of information that you can get. 
Make sure you go deep on this one. And local laws really matter as well. Make sure to take time to learn about your local legislation concerning small businesses and figure your potential taxes out. You know, be creative with it. Give that high school colleague who recently got an MBA a call. Find successful artists online and ask them for advice. You'd be surprised what they say. Or you can just watch my passive income series. Link in description. Each hour that you spend learning about good business practices is a solid brick you lay on your business's foundation. You will thank yourself later. Step number three is to find your niche. By this point, you should have a good idea of what your business is going to look like. The only thing you're missing right now is customers. So you should go out there and find them. The first mistake people make when starting a business is waiting for customers to come to them. But from my own experience, that's a huge mistake. What you need to do is hunt them out yourself and sniff them out. So where are they? Where are my clients. If you were your ideal customer, where would you be? What forums do you hang out on? Where do you spend your time? How much money would you normally spend on art? What would your hobbies be? Okay, so you probably see where I'm going with this, right? You won't ever make a living with your art if you don't define your ideal customer. Selling a general art product to an undefined customer base won't take you anywhere at Bruh. all. For your art to sell, especially at the beginning, you need to identify your ideal customer and talk to them directly. You need to find a niche and stick to it. This is a huge topic, so luckily your favorite YouTube channel has you covered on that front. I did a full video on finding the perfect niche a few weeks ago, and you'll learn everything you need to know about finding one. So link in the description. Again, I got a lot of videos on. Step four is your market analysis phase. For this part, the internet is your best friend. Go online and find the best ways to sneak into the market. What are the most popular platforms for selling your style of artwork? How much does each marketplace charge as a commission per sale? What other artists are make a killing in your niche? How exactly are they doing it? Try finding what type of products sell best. What kind of discounts and promotions other stores are running? Take note of what are they doing during the holiday season? Do they have loyalty programs? Do they offer small gifts with every purchase? Do they use affiliate marketing? What channels are they using to promote their products? How are they using those channels? There is a thousand things you can micro analyze. Look for every last detail of their strategy. Try figuring out why they do what they do and what you can do better. Step number five is to devise your plan and then stick to it. So by now, if you follow these steps, you should have a pretty good idea of where you're going to go with your art business. So it's time to create an actionable plan that will become your own personal Bible. I would recommend using a project management software such as Notion or Asana to write it down and keep it ready for future reference. It's much more organized than using something like Google Keep or keeping it in a Google Drive. Although those can work as well, whatever works for you. Some things that you wanna include in this framework are questions like, what will your business name be? What is your brand voice going to be? How often are you going to add new products to the store? How often do you post on social media? What times during the day do you reply to emails? And so on and so forth. We can also talk about ad campaigns, discounts, promotions. There's so much stuff you can cover in there. The main idea of what I'm trying to point out is that I want you to set a clear schedule that includes all of your responsibilities and stick to it. It is the only way you'll be able to stay on top of things, especially at the beginning when you are the only person working on your business. Discipline is hard, but the regret that comes with not doing what you want and not achieving your goals is much worse. Trust me. Making sure that you follow your business schedule religiously will ensure you've always got everything covered and ensure that you won't burn out or quit prematurely. You can also use your project management software to keep everything you need in one place for easy access. You can keep all of your login credentials for all of your accounts, email templates, thank you notes, artwork licenses, legal documents, invoice, tax forms, etc. Poor organization is your number one enemy and the reason why so many people feel overwhelmed at the thought of going into business for themselves. But if you keep organized and keep a clear schedule, it's not that bad. Just make sure to keep working smart. So let's talk about pricing your artwork. Pricing your artwork is probably the hardest part of this entire process, at least one of the hardest. There are many factors going into this decision and it's generally pretty hard to be objective. You are, after all, putting a price on your emotions, your creativity, your vulnerabilities. You're putting a price on countless hours you've spent perfecting your craft, on every hour you spent creating your business. But customers don't care about that. American painter Robert Kulik once said, nobody ever got off the ground unless he was a bargain. 
You have to find this sweet spot where you can entice buyers, but also make a satisfying sale. Many artists, probably including yourself, are tempted to sell their work for peanuts in the beginning. They think that since they have no buyer prospects, they can compensate with low prices. And I can understand the mentality, only it won't do much for you in the long run. Let me explain. Not only will you burn out faster and become discouraged, you will also build the wrong customer base. You don't want to attract only those customers who are looking for steals. Serious buyers won't take you seriously if you're selling your work for mere cents. Plus, the ones who buy your work at those prices will expect them to stay the same. Start taking yourself seriously, and your customers will too. Do it! There are many methods to price your art correctly, but I find the easiest one is just to use an hourly rate. You can determine that by quickly determining your costs and your desired profits for the month, then dividing that sum with the number of hours you wish to work. Make sure to include the time you spend administrating your business as well. From here, you can price every product by the number of hours it took you to finish it from start to upload. So the price should also include the time you spent creating previews, mockups, and other presentation files, the time it took you to upload on your desired platforms, and all other related activities. I think you guys are really starting to see now how much work actually goes into this. So here is the meat and potatoes of this video. Where should you sell? In my opinion, this is the exciting stuff. You know, you've got a suite of products that you're ready to sell, you've done your homework, and you're ready to charge at your future career full force. But where do you sell them? You have a myriad of options, so which one is actually the best for you? My opinion is that you should start selling on an already established marketplace. These come with their own clients, so you'll have a lot more chances to have your work noticed. There are plenty of these sites around, so you'll need to choose one that represents your interests best. Some marketplaces have their own end user license agreements, which means that your work will ultimately fall under the site's agreement instead of your own. You won't be able to impose your license terms on anyone who bought your work from one of these sites when their terms differ from yours. So when choosing an online marketplace, you should probably go for those whose license terms are similar to your own. To filter them further, you should also consider the site's commission so you can earn the most with every sale. Other factors can chip into your decision as well, such as the number of users, how is the organic traffic, the level of competition, how many other sellers are present in your niche, etc, etc. Generally, I'd advise sticking to three or four marketplaces and avoiding the urge to create new accounts like the plague. Then if you've noticed one site is doing dramatically better than the other, you can focus all of your attention on that one. So let's talk about marketing. Once you have everything up and running, it's time to become the annoying door-to-door -door salesman. But you know, let's make it a little more 2021. Focus most of your efforts on building an audience. If you're enjoying my videos and you wanna watch me talk about it, I have a video on how to grow your following, so you can click the link in the description. I would also recommend finding little gimmicks that'll make every customer you have recommend you to their friends. Everyone's got a gimmick now. There's tons of other stuff you can do as well. You can take online courses such as HubSpot's free marketing courses. You can read books on marketing techniques. You can learn Google's analytics tools. You can experiment with email marketing, which is a very, very powerful tool. MailChimp is a free tool you can use to build an email list and run campaigns, and it's free to use for small businesses. It also provides many in-depth articles and tips on how to make more sales using their platform. It's pretty cool. A big chunk of your success as a seller, especially as a digital artist, will come from proper marketing. Your products could be top of the line, but this will make no difference if you aren't able to reach the right people. And you don't really have to be an expert marketer to do so. I'm honestly not buying this trend of artists saying, I just want to be an artist. I want to make art. I want to, I don't want to focus on marketing, but I'm going to be honest. I think that is an excuse. And I think it's people being lazy and being afraid to expand themselves and expand their horizons. If they don't want to do it, them. you do it and get a head up on the competition. Going into business for yourself can be really daunting. I get that. There will probably be a period where you'll use all your free time to build this business from the ground up and it can really be disheartening when you don't get any sales. But nothing worth having will be easy to get in this life. There's a saying that says, entrepreneurship is spending some of your years of your life like many people wouldn't, so you can spend the rest of your years like many people can't. And that's one of the things that's driving me through this story and through this experience. But marketing aside, forget about that for a second. I want you to understand that you already have a significant advantage over the other people starting their journey. You are selling something you believe in. Not only that, but the process of creating new products is one you already enjoy. There's no reason for you not to capitalize on it. In fact, it would be a mistake not to. 
I hope you guys enjoyed this video. In related news, I'm most likely going to be creating a Discord community for artists who are interested in learning about the business side of art. So keep an eye out for that. If you want to learn more about business, again, feel free to check out my entire artist to business owner playlist. Thanks guys, and I will see you in the next video.